what is Steve Well of the business? Uh, and th this is going to be our first question. Uh, uh, for the camera again, uh, what can you tell us about your tour? Which this tour? This tour. Uh, this tour. Just the just... first impressions about the tour. Yeah, this is only the second day on the tour at the moment, so I can't really give a good impression. But the uh, two-week tour of Europe is just basically consisting of uh, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and uh, Czech Republic. Uh, it's just a, a short tour to promote Hardcore Hooligan, which is a football album we just brought out. Which consists of 12 football songs. It's a kind of a compilation album. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it, most yeah. of the songs are uh, released on, on other albums. Yeah, well, if, if you listen to it, because there's two, there's two covers, two business songs which have been redone, which is Handball and Saturday's Heroes. They've been re-recorded. And also, there's um, new songs, new football songs, which haven't been heard. And one of them, unfortunately, had to be taken off the album. How come? Because of legal reasons, because of the content of the song um, would have brought a lot of trouble to our door um, with one of the, like, the major publishing companies. It's uh, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. And it's consists of a uh, chorus sung but a bit different and the words aren't very nice. You really hate Maradona. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you, well, look at the handball, look at the, uh, Maradona from, from the, uh, keep the Keep the Faith album, I mean. Yeah, it isn't necessarily <laughs> against Maradona, this one is particularly the Argentina team with where um, a lot of the pre-match talk and banter was based around slagging England off and using dirty tactics. So when they was actually beaten, they then must accept things to come back on them. And that's basically what happened, you know, that song was basically a comeback from all the talk and the, the boasting and uh, banter that they was, they was given across in the press. Well, uh, when, when you're talking about football, what, is, uh, what do you expect from, from Portugal? I mean, I mean uh, England uh, is in the same, same uh, group as Croatia. So many, many of Cro Croatian uh, football fans said, well, maybe, maybe we, can, we can beat England. I mean, Rio Ferdinand uh, is off of the team, so... Your, your prediction about the game? Yeah, we got Scott Park. There's a lot of young players coming up in England that not many people know about, which are very good. And yeah. So do you expect them to be placed on the team? Or? Yeah, I would imagine there's, um, there's a lot of talent actually at the moment in England on the football circuit. And I think when Portugal comes along, it'd be a good platform for them to show their skills, you know. So maybe after Portugal there'd be a, a more uh, famous English footballers in the people's minds. Mm -hmm. uh, your expectations about England team? What do I think? Yeah, like, I'm just um, a big fan of good football and uh -huh. some... I've heard that the England versus Croatia game is going to be like a high risk game with, with a lot of football hooligans and everything. Uh, my question isn't like, do you support hooliganism or something like that, but do you, do you expect people to, to get into fights or something like that? I understand what you're saying, and this is a misconception now uh -huh. of the rest of the world about England. England's football hooligans, yeah. they don't really exist anymore. That was something back in the 80s. That was a predominant thing at football. And now, the rest of the world still think that England is the main football hooligan firm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the trouble is the government has cracked down and arrested so many football hooligans from the 80s. They're still in prison now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, the football hooligan firm from England isn't anywhere near what it used to be mm -hmm. and uh, it, the football hooligan firm will go to Croatia, go to Turkey go, and they still think that is the main firm so they're going to fight them
because I, I think that's the most. But it's I not. I mean, Turkish Turkish hooligans are now like worse than than any uh, European hooligans. Because yeah. they're Stabbing allowed people, to be, yeah. They're allowed to do that by their government, and as you know yourself, if the government decide that you're not allowed to do that anymore, yeah. they will make sure you don't do it. And a consequence, some countries haven't quite caught up a modern day football. What what really happened to, to West Ham? I mean, they're not even in the Premier League now. They, unfortunately, I'm actually a Chelsea supporter. Uh, really? Game, but, <laughs> Are you a headhunter? <laughs> no, no. I, I actually, um, in my opinion, would say that West Ham um, got a manager which wasn't very good and from that moment they got that manager their team just plummeted um, okay, um, lost the games one kind of. more question about football do you think that the the reform during the late 80s like the the, the Thatcher football law that uh, that would held all the hooligans from the from the stadiums like like with putting all the seats in and getting a lot of police there uh, do you think it destroyed such, some uh, some like conception about classical I mean, English football and everything. Because you have a song like Saturday's Heroes uh, <coughs> in which uh, you sing uh, but they can get uh, get me on the camera. I mean it's... Uh, yeah, you're, you're <laughs> in the right area. That's basically what he was dealing with. The closing down, the taming of football. Now, what I will say to you now, in my opinion, that particular time you're talking about, was a Tory government, which is Maggie Thatcher's uh, government, and they wanted to prove, as a Tory, that they are very strong on law and order. Now, the ideal situation for them would be the game of football, because they, number one, they know what time it's going to happen, three o'clock Saturday afternoon. Number two, they know that all the press in England will be at that game watching it and they can then police it in a respect that they have tamed football hooligan, the, the, the they, ferocious they can send a strong animal that nobody can tame. The Tory government has tamed it. That's how strong we are on law and order. Right? Anything else, forget about it. It's not in the public. Just the uh, kind of a government, the government, uh, uh, what? Government fraud scam. Yeah, it's all. Most governments are based on scamming, <laughs> um, spin, as we call it in England. Uh -huh. They get, you know. So, uh, why, why, uh, in eight, why, uh, why business didn't tour so much as this? Now, now in eighties, at least. Um, we was only because of sad or riot or. It's no, it's um. Well, something that wasn't really a big issue for us. We wasn't really interested. You know, we was enjoying, we just didn't really take the, the music that seriously. Uh -huh. It was a fun thing, drinking and driving. Uh, it was more, you know, oh, what if it, you know, we play music in a pub anywhere, we yeah. have a laugh, but that's it. You know, we had no concept of anything outside England that anybody knew of the business mm -hmm. outside of England. We had no idea whether they knew about the business in America, in Europe, Asia. We had no idea. Because, because uh, I read uh, somewhere about your tour in, in America in 19, 1994. It was like a huge tour. Uh, um, many, many bands showed up and in, in a metal camera, I mean, like metal and agnostic front and, and stamping ground and uh, uh, starting 